is closed. Fuel pump 2 is on, landing lights are on. I don't need them, but yes. Rotor brake release. All right, have a call. Are you guys ready to go? Well, let's go. Whiteman traffic, Green Gyro taking runway 12, departure to the southeast to Burbank airspace. Whiteman. Approaching runway 12. Entered runway 12, 4100 feet remaining. Hello everybody, I would like to present to you a series of videos about my gyroplane trip from Los Angeles to Oshkosh and back. After two months of detailed planning and intense preparation, I'm finally on my way. Let's take a look at the route I'm planning to take. The plan is to arrive in Kenosha, where a friend of mine has a hangar, and to use that uh, hangar as a base to visit Oshkosh. The biggest obstacle on my route are the Rocky Mountains, that is why I would try to bypass them by flying through southern Wyoming. I'm hoping to arrive in 3 days, but if delays occur, 4 days would be ok. Before even thinking about the entire route, let's concentrate on day 1. My goal is to reach Heber City by the evening, where another friend of mine keeps his airplane and there would be room in his hangar for my gyro. It will be a long way of flying, that is why I am departing before sunrise. The first leg of my journey is taking me to Barstow Daggett Airport. During this trip, I will be guided by the IFRO, I follow roads. That is why my route would not be the most direct path between two points. As I cross the LA Basin, I will have high mountains to the north of my route.
A thin layer of morning clouds gives the area an eerie appearance, but it is not thick enough to prevent VFR flying. Soon after departure, I am starting to settle into cruise mode. The anticipation of the journey ahead of me puts butterflies in my stomach, so being familiar with the local area at the start of the long trip is a great confidence booster. With so many thoughts rushing through my head, it was a bonus to stretch my wings in a familiar environment. The sky is getting brighter with every passing minute. Finally, the sun peaks from behind the mountains and greets the entire basin with its warm rays. As darkness moves away, the sky is painted with bright sunrise colors. The morning mist is slowly melting away. The first warm sun rays feel nice, but I know that soon their intensity will be unbearable. As I enter the Cajon Pass and turn toward the north, I am glad the sun is not blinding me anymore. It is amazing how fast the terrain rises from the LA Basin to the high desert. Even at that early hour, Highway 15 is already busy. But that should not be a surprise since this is the main road between Los Angeles and Las Vegas. North of the Cajon Pass, the high desert presents a flat, windswept surface. As the sunlight gets more intense, it is time to put my sunglasses on. I can hear the camera beeping but I'm unable to figure out what's wrong with it and fix it in flight. 
this is very frustrating. With no running camera, there will be no video footage. Few hills break the monotony of the flat terrain. It is time to start preparations for landing at Barstow Target Airport. Let's start with listening to the automated weather observation system. Barstow Target Airport. Automated weather observation. 1349er Zulu. Wind 290 at 10. Visibility 10. Sky condition clear. Temperature 28 Celsius. Dew point 01 Celsius. Altimeter 2988. For marks, density altitude 4000. Density altitude of 4000 feet. Not too bad. The rest sounds normal. It appears runaway 22 is the best option for landing. Air taxi takes me closer to the exit. Getting some cooler air in the cabin feels nice after a long taxi to the apron. Although, I try to keep each fight fairly short, it still feels great to stretch your legs. Now is the right time to see what was wrong with the camera. It feels quite warm to the touch, so I hope it is not overheating already. Let me install a new SD card as well. The next leg of my trip takes me through the desert to Boulder City, just east of Las Vegas. I should expect hot sun and potentially strong winds. Back in the pilot seat, I must ensure all electronics are plugged in properly. Always taxi with caution on former military airfields. Their surfaces can be quite uneven, especially for small gyro tires.
As I'm saying goodbye to Daggett Airport, I realize this will be my last fuel stop on my return home. The high desert can sometimes be boring. The high desert can sometimes be called weird. The high desert can sometimes be flat. The high desert also has hills. The high desert has magnificent landscapes. The high desert is an acquired taste and I love flying over it. There are also mountains in the high desert. In strong winds, it is better to stay far away from them. Lucky for me, today the winds are moderate. From my vantage point, I could see far away. But I could still notice finer details on the ground.
is getting hot under the blistering sun. So I'm rolling my sleeves up for better ventilation. It is important to stay hydrated on any flight, but especially when it is hot. Drink water often, but in small sips for easier absorption by the body. Occasionally, I'm checking my blood oxygen level. So far, so good. This looks like a huge open pit mining operation. These bright spots are solar farms, with thousands of mirrors concentrating sunlight at a focal point. This sandy area is at the bottom of the valley. This place gets under a few feet of water during the rainy season. When in the desert heat your iPad overheats, you must ensure your backup is fully charged. Large swaths of desert floor are covered by solar panels. We are saving the air from pollution, but are we protecting the earth as well?
As I approach Boulder City Airport, I keep my eye open for Grand Canyon sightseeing helicopters based here. After listening to the automated weather observation system, I am taking runaway 27 for landing. Because of the high density altitude, I carry extra power on the landing. The apron here is quite large, so I'm having a hard time finding the FBO building. Maybe the big FBO letters should have told me where the FBO building is. The next leg of my journey is taking me to St. George, Utah. Terrain will be getting higher and temperatures will be soaring. No need to waste time on the ground. Let's taxi for departure. Forest City traffic, Green Gyro 202, Bravo Golf, taking 27, departure to the north. Uh, we have the Cessna above the field inside. My route is taking me along the shore of Lake Mead. A few minutes later I am cutting north by the Valley of Fire. I am stunned by the magnificent terrain all around me. It is very upsetting not to have my main cameras running. But I remember, I still have my iPhone.
I don't like filming while flying, but these sights are not to be missed. It is not easy to fly a gyro and take a good video. Especially when the bright sunlight makes the screen useless. At least the iPhone takes great videos. At this point I have to flip the only running camera, so at least there is some video. As I approach Mesquite, Nevada, I encounter a few Virga cells. It is fascinating to observe intense precipitation that never reaches the ground. Magical the closer you get to it.
Mesmerized by my surroundings, I almost missed to notice how potentially dangerous this area is in case of an engine emergency. At this point, I can see the city of St. George in the distance. St. George traffic, green gyro, 5,400 feet over the 15. Inbound will take uh, uh, right uh, downwind for one mile in the St. George. St. George traffic, green gyro over the truck warehouse uh, at uh, 5000 uh, inbound for one nine right downwind. Thank you, traffic. Sears 41 Romeo Papa, uh, uh, 3.8 miles north of the field, traveling north, climbing through 5,200. Gyro, where are you at? How far from the field? I'm about uh, three and a half miles uh, due west, uh, southwest. Cherokee, you're loud and clear. Gyro, where'd you say you were? I'm over the big uh, truck warehouse uh, that is the west of the field, sir. Uh, Okay, I know about where that is. I'm climbing through 5,400. I'll be passing you on your west. Thanks. Send your traffic green gyro at midfield on the uh, right downwind for one line, St. George. And George traffic check, number 066 at the east road, taxiing to runway 19 via Alpha. And George. St. George traffic, uh, Green Jarrow turning right base, short final, one nine, St. George. St. George traffic, Green Jarro clear of 19 at Alpha 2, St. George.
the aircraft you up. Ah, uh, yes sir, where's the fuel here? Oh, how long are you going to be here? Uh, I'm just grabbing fuel and departing to the north. On the ground the temperature is 47 degrees Celsius or 116 degrees Fahrenheit. My next destination is Fillmore, Utah. From now on, density altitude will be a major factor. After another quick pit stop, I am ready to taxi. Let's taxi. St. George traffic, Green Jerry, taxi 190 Alpha, St. George. St. George traffic, Green Jarrow taking runaway 19, departing to the north along the 15, St. George. The faster airspeed forces some badly needed cool air through the open vents. so hot, sweat was dripping down my sunglasses. Eventually, there was enough air circulation to cool down the cabin. The city of St. George is surrounded by some fascinating landscapes. The green within the city is in stark contrast to the surrounding terrain. It 
looks like the population is growing. Creek Reservoir provides vital water supply to the area. The rest of the day I will keep the mountains to my right. Over the first mountain ridge, I am seeing the western edge of Zion National Park. For a moment I am getting a glimpse of these magnificent red rocks. Most of the terrain I am flying over is flat. Irrigation is important to grow any crop out here. Not long after departing St. George, I am flying over Cedar City.
My final destination for day one is planned for Hebrew City. It looks like there is a fast moving storm developing in that area. That is why I will stop at Spanish Fork to assess the weather before finishing the day. Break. Check is off. Everything is off. All right. After topping off at few more, I'm taxiing for departure. Runaway 22 is favoring the southern winds and is conveniently close to the apron. rotating to 220 RPM. Then using the takeoff run to bring the rotor to flying speed. I am feeling the effects of a fairly high density altitude. Departure, I am waving goodbye to the firefighters battling the nearby forest fires. I met some of them while refueling. Smoke from the forest fires is clearly visible on the hills east of the town of Fillmore. The nature of the terrain I was flying over did not change north of Fillmore. I could see thunderstorms developing to the east over the mountains. The 
Since I have chosen to follow the highway to my destination, I am glad it is going straight there. The arid valley is sliced by meandering rivers and streams at more than one location. I landed at Spanish Fork Airport to wait for a passing thunderstorm to clear the Heber Valley, my final destination for day one. While standing on the tarmac, I noticed a small mechanical issue with my gyro that must be addressed before the next flight. I decide to stay at Spanish Fork overnight so the issue can be resolved in the morning. After a long day of flying, let's look at it by the numbers. Thank you for watching and if you like this video, please give us thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.